Let's join Tim Sandel to hear about some key changes to the first chapter of the European Union's good manufacturing practice. In this video, Dr. Sandel focuses on quality risk management and product quality reviews. Hello, I'm Tim Sandel, and I just want to run through the uh, revision of EU GMP Chapter 1. So a draft of EU GMP Chapter 1 has been issued uh, by the European Medicines Agency and through the uh, PIC scheme. And I'm just going to quickly run through some of the uh, key changes and what it's signalling about the quality system. So with the revision, there's quite a lot about quality risk management. Uh, so quality risk management is going to be embedded um, deeper into uh, Chapter 1. So the uh, first area I think comes to mind to me is with governance. So here it's saying that um, quality risk management must be proactive, which is the spirit of ICHQ9 uh, Revision 1. Um, it's also saying that um, quality risk management must capture continued improvement. So again, continued improvement is uh, a bedrock of Chapter 1. But what we're doing is aligning quality risk management to help drive that continuous improvement process. It also says that quality risk management must cover the product life cycle, but also um, address factors like drug shortages. And the risk assessment should be in place to um, uh, include mitigations, um, and cover things like manufacturing, supply chain disruptions. Another factor, uh, particularly as people move on in pharmaceutical companies, is knowledge capture. Often in pharmaceutical firms, people move on, and this is becoming a particular issue as um, people are retiring. So knowledge capture, knowledge transfer, are important factors and one thing chapter one is doing with the quality risk management process is also calling on this to improve our capture of knowledge how it's collated and how it is actually used the chapter is also highlighting um, about the quality risk management process so it's calling on scientific data driven knowledge to be used and also, as knowledge is accumulated, then there's a call on the risk management, the risk assessments that have been done, to be re-evaluated. Um, it calls on quality risk management to always focus on attributes that directly inform us about product quality, especially those two key words, safety and efficacy. In line with ICHQ9R1 that the level of formality, the level of detail that we put into risk assessments should be commensurate with the risk. So for low risks we can do uh, more simple approaches but where the risk is high then there should be sufficient detail and we should be prioritizing our resources workload and so on towards those risks that are the highest those that are going to impact upon the safety and efficacy of the pharmaceutical product another area is with equipment um, design so there's a call upon quality risk management to focus on the design requirements that's that building in of quality by design um, and also quality risk management needs to be clearly aligned with validation, particularly those items of equipment that are intimately connected with the quality and efficacy of the product. So direct linked with, again with product quality. There's also um, the alignment of quality risk management with manufacturing. So the uh, draft chapter is saying that um, the quality risk management process must provide an early warning system for drifts in manufacturing. They're going to come back and impact upon product quality. 
quality risk assessment should address um, supply shortages, so things like raw materials, uh, factors to do with service providers, uh, contract organisations. Draft chapter one also provides greater detail about how we should be conducting product quality reviews. And one of the key factors is the size of the data set that is used to look at critical quality attributes and um, critical performance parameters. So it's saying that the trending of data from the previous PQR should be um, sufficient. So it needs to be large enough. So if we're not making as many batches, we should be um, going back over one or two years to connect a sufficiently large data set together that can directly inform about the product. It also emphasizes that even if we haven't manufactured a product, we still need to perform a product quality review, focusing on the stability trials associated with that product. If we choose to group products together of a similar nature, uh, conducting a matrix approach, then this needs to be scientifically justified. And the draft chapter one warns that this pooling of different types of product cannot obscure a trend with a particular product. So it has to be sufficiently sensitive to pick up the um, variations with the process because the PQR at the end of the day is the key thing that informs us about the continued robustness of our process validation and at what point we need to trigger a revalidation. So now I'm going to sum up the uh, key changes with EU GMP Chapter 1. Then, to my mind, the essentials are with capturing knowledge management, building in risk assessment into the um, continuation of product supply, and also making sure that we're taking a risk-based approach to the way that we construct, review and look at the product quality review or as the US equivalent would be the annual product review. So I think a lot of the changes to EU GMP Chapter 1 are to be welcomed. Um, of course this hasn't been agreed yet, the chapter is open for consultation um, so you have the opportunity to input, but I think a lot of it, a lot of the themes, the currents that are uh, in, built into the change are very likely to happen. So um, there's some good things there to consider and to start um, reviewing. So EU GMP Chapter 1 is all about the pharmaceutical quality system. It hasn't been updated for uh, several years and it's now undergoing a revision. And the two key things within that revision are quality risk management, aligning more closely with ICH Q9 and with the way that the product quality review, that really key annual assessment as to the performance of the product are conducted. And with the changes to EU GMP, we not only have uh, Chapter 1, but Chapter 4 is being updated. So it's um, combining a lot of the data integrity aspects are going to be built into the chapter. And we also have um, Annex 11 undergoing review, which is the um, computerized systems. And there's a new Annex 22, which is looking at the subject of artificial intelligence for the first time. So lots of changes, lots of activity ongoing in the world of European Union good manufacturing practice and also with the 
uh, pharmaceutical inspection and cooperation scheme which is aligned and all the different bodies the regulatory bodies around the world that align to those so um, please have a look at these drafts um, they are important thank you very much uh, I've been Tim Sandal and it's been a pleasure talking to you